OK, so six <laughs> years ago, you're thrown together, you don't know each other. What were your first impressions? And you can be honest now. Well, we haven't. <laughs> we all, we, we all always yeah, thought Sarah was crazy. That's okay. never changed. Because she was. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Following the critical acclaim of their Tangled Up album, Girls Aloud would once again come together to write and record what would ultimately become their final studio album. With music more diverse and experimental than ever before, this is Girls Aloud Out of Control. In May 2008, while on the Tangled Up tour, Girls Aloud announced that they would begin work on their fifth studio album. Sarah told MTV News in September that year that they'd been working on it all summer. She noted that Girls Aloud wanted to stay upbeat but try something a bit different and advanced, with Nadine commenting that the aim from the beginning was to come up with songs that didn't sound like anything else out there. Girls Aloud would co-write four songs on the album, Love is the Key, Miss You Bow Wow, Revolution in the Head and Live in the Country. We Want a Party would be another Liena Nystrom co-written track which had previously featured on her 2003 solo album Play With Me. What's your level of involvement now in terms of like the writing, choosing who you work with, that sort of stuff? Are you very much in control? We've got a, we've got a formula now with um, Xenomania, who's Brian Higgins and his team. Yeah. And that they always produce our albums, singles, everything we've done, they've done from day one. So it's kind of like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But we all do writing individually. Um, we've wrote a little bit on this album, but the stuff we write is it wouldn't kind of fit with what we're currently doing, so kind of what have to leave it. What sort of stuff are you guys writing? Them. Well, you know, it's all deep, deep like, yeah, just you just know. Back, it would be more gangster rap, gangster rap, yeah, 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 yeah. for the weekends. <laughs> no, but you know, obviously, if you write a song, it might not be a girls allowed song. Yeah, you know what I mean, so this, you know, we've yeah. wrote little it's bits and pieces on each song, but obviously. The most of the album's written by the Xenomania team. And it's all so fun, and the girl that writes all the lyrics, Miranda Cooper, I don't know where she thinks of these things. Yeah. So yeah. if we started coming up with those lyrics, she would start to worry, you'd be like, yeah, are you okay? Be. <laughs> yeah. Is everything all right? Well, they actually take their inspiration from what's going on with us anyway, so it's all just a, a team effort. Um, is it a, a sort of progression from the previous albums? I mean, you know, yeah, you're obviously think, getting yeah, older, yeah. you're more sort of a ladies allowed. Yeah, yes. It's more of a mature ladies sound. Yeah. It's more a mature subject on the album. Yeah. It's definitely a, a, an older sounding album, I would say. Yeah. And yeah. some of the songs, like there's a song Untouchable that's really kind of, you play it and you feel like you're on Ibiza sitting there, oh, like yeah. in a chill out type of like some really good mm. beats. Really good to go with bass. different sounds and stuff, like there's some 60s influence songs, and then like Nadine said, and so it's kind of like, it's like a drum and bass. Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole different thing going on. Um, now, the title, Out of Control, what's that saying to me? <laughs> Are you <laughs> rebellious? You know what, you yeah, thing? Yeah. Do you know what? We kind of, well, yeah, we were a bit, when we were recording the album, it's, it's a lyric actually on yeah. one of the tracks, a track that we recorded first a couple of years back and tried for the album, but it was a, it was a bit too right mature time. then, yeah. Mm. Um, but this time around, we were kind of a bit, a bit out of control when it okay. comes to, when it comes to making song decisions, single decisions, all of that. We kind of all went a bit wild, and the, the record <laughs> company actually said to us at one point, you know what? It's up to you, then you're out of control, and we were like, OK. Oh, good. Well, yeah, like, good. 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 Like, <laughs> I'd like to have been in on that meeting, just the record going, oh, for God's sake, yeah. I can't take it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Do it yourself. Yeah. After about you. six yeah. years, I suppose, of trying yeah. to deal with us, and I think and sometimes the pictures and stuff that you yeah. see of us people see us as, you know, these mad out of oh, control yeah. girls, which we have our oh, moments. No. Yeah, but at the same time, we are, we're very... <laughs> We're very in control of our career yeah. and yeah. what we do, so there's kind of a few and meanings then, take from it what you want, yeah. yeah. And it lends to good stuff, like when it comes to the tour and stuff, you know, we'll, we can do anything, yeah. 
Cheryl, you've got to give this girl a shot. In addition, in 2008, Cheryl replaced Sharon Osbourne as a judge on the fifth series of The UK X Factor, alongside creator Simon Cow, Danny Minogue and Louis Walsh. But, yeah, but you, you know about girl groups. And you don't. Not as much no, as that's right. <laughs> yes, S-H-U-T. Oh. We had to fight for the promise to be the first single off the last album. The label didn't want it to be that, they wanted it to be something else and we all felt so strongly about it. We just knew when we heard that track it was going to be a hit. We just, my spidey sense was going crazy. And we were like, it has to be this and that was the first time we really put our foot down. Just flown back down from LA and they were saying it must be this other song no other way can it be and I was like okay so there's no point in me sitting in this photo shoot if we're not doing the promise first I may as well just fly back to LA right now and yeah about 45 minutes later we were doing the promise was our first single I was like okay hair makeup work away I felt like Women loved it, they loved the glamour of it. It was a real strong girls moment. It's a great song. I remember someone saying that The Promise was like a oh, pop suicide and we were like, oh please. And then it went straight in at number one, then the album was at number one and then we won a Brit with The Promise so we were like, The backing track for The Promise was composed by two Australian musicians, Jason Raish and Kieran Jones, who would later play the song for Brian Higgins. Brian and Miranda Cooper, afraid they would ruin the moment, waited weeks to write the song's lyrics. They eventually wrote the song in just seven minutes. As soon as Girls Aloud heard the song, they decided it should be the first single from Out of Control. On the 15th of October 2008, The Promise was released as the lead single from the new album. The song was issued in radio edit form and received mostly positive reviews from music critics, though it was criticised by some for having too many ideas in one song and for being a shameless attempt at trying to cash in on the Duffy and Amy Winehouse sound popular at that time. The Promise entered the UK singles chart at number one, selling over 77,000 copies in its first week, making it Girls Aloud's second best first week sales, beaten only by Sound of the Underground back in 2002. Additionally, the song entered the Irish singles chart at number four and in its second week on the chart rose two places to number two. of Control saw its official release on the 31st of October 2008. The album received mostly positive reviews from music critics. The album debuted on the UK Albums Chart at number one, becoming their first studio album to do so. On the 4th of January 2009, The Sound of Girls Aloud, The Greatest Hits, re-entered the charts at number six, whilst Out of Control was sitting at number 10, thus giving Girls Aloud two top 10 albums at the same time. The album debuted on the Irish Albums Chart at number seven, 
7, the highest debut of the week and their second highest charting in Ireland. Out of Control went on to sell over 800,000 copies. In addition to the album, an extra limited edition live album was released. Entitled The Girls Alive, the bonus disc was available to purchase only from Woolworths, featuring a number of live performances from Girls Aloud's previous tours. Additionally, a double disc collector's edition of the album was released on the 8th of December. The box set came in a DVD sized case and contained a bonus disc of unreleased demos and interviews, as well as a 24 page booklet containing photos and lyrics to all of the songs. from Girls Aloud featuring The Promise and the new single The Loving Kind Out of Control the new album Everyone Loves Girls Aloud What are you all doing? We've got a big party to organise. I can't believe this. You've just all been sat there reading magazines while I've been out shopping. As usual, doing everything, making sure everything's great for tonight. Well, do you know what? I'll just do it all myself. It's like I usually do. I'll just do it all myself. Same old start. Go and put the kettle on, babe. I'm choking for a cup of tea. The Girls Allowed Party, coming soon. On the 13th of December 2008, ITV aired a Christmas special entitled The Girls Allowed Party. All five members took part in the show, which generally consisted of the group performing some of their biggest hits, as well as some tracks from their new album, intercepted with comedy sketches and some interaction with the audience. Hi, welcome to the Girls Alive video shoot. We're in West London and this is our second single, The Love and Kind. Let's have it. The Love and Kind is slightly more dancey, um, which is obviously showing another side of the album. And the Pet Shop Boys actually co-wrote the song, so it's got a bit of a maybe a bit of an 80s feel to it. It's one of those songs that all the fans were kind of saying, "Oh, we love this song, and we love this about it," and it sounds like Call the Shots, but different. So we thought, okay, everybody's really liking it, we'll go with that. It's just quite an ironic song, really. It's like one of those songs that you can take the meaning, you know, many different ways. Most people you know, want to be, you know, loving and there for somebody, but then sometimes you just can't be. So it's like one of those, like we're there, but maybe not all of the time. The idea behind this treatment is that each member of Girls Aloud will be in a mirrored box which will then give off 
thousands of reflections of the same person and within that character you are two people. You are really nice girls allowed that's a really loving kind and then the sarcastic girls allowed that well you think I'm the loving kind but I don't really care if you don't. We're not really the type of girls to sing about mushy loving caring gestures so we're just putting a bit of a sarcastic slant on it which um, hopefully will work out in the video. It's all black white and red theme a lot of lighting a lot of props a lot of performance and a lot of it's going to be done you know within the edit and it's just kind of a much more stylized take on the lyrics we're in a very unglamorous studio in West London and I got the short straw so I'm up first today uh, a bit tired the first thing that we're going to do is my beauty shot um, which is basically just the head close-ups here we go stand by and playback Cut. Trudy Bellinger, the director, and um, we've worked with, um, I couldn't even count them anybody else. Trudy always has really good ideas. It's nice when you trust a director and when you're always happy with the work that comes back. Because she's a woman, she knows what looks good, what looks bad. She won't film from a certain angle, she won't, you know, she won't ask you to do something so, because we know each other, she cuts out a lot of the time. She does direct quite strongly, like she'll actually go and act it out fully yourself. Because before it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. really, really, with this time, yeah. it's more like yeah. aggressive, harder. And you can see completely where she's going with it and then you just obviously bring your take to it. Okay, we're gonna go straight away into nasty Kimberly now. Apparently we've got to do a nice Kimberly and a mean Kimberly, so that should be interesting. I think the way I'm feeling right now, the mean one's gonna be easier to be honest. I'm so tired. I'm bored out of my mind. There was quite a few cathartic things with the whole ripping of the shirt, smashing the bottle. And then you're going to get the scissors and start cutting, okay? Let us really see that you're cutting it. Go a little bit slower so we can read the scissors. I did try to enjoy that as much as possible, but it's not quite so much fun tearing up a shirt when they're like, you've got to tear it this way at this particular angle. No, don't turn to the side. You just want to like rip it whichever way comes naturally. A little bit more forward, Kimberly. The other facing towards where I am, that's it. That's it. Great. And cut. I had to kind of angle it and I don't know. Hopefully it worked out all right. Let's have a round of applause for Kimberly, everybody. What a girl. I'm up next. Um, Kimberly's been already, so I'm the second one in. I don't really know too much about the scenario, so I'm just about to find out what's going to happen there. Ready? We've had to do quite a lot of double speed singing today, which is always a tricky one because you need to get your mouth around the words at double speed. Basically, you sing that quick, but obviously when it comes back to the video, you're singing at normal speed. It just gives a far more beautiful effect. It's more fun when the five of us are here, so felt a little bit strange without the other four girls being around, to be totally honest. It's going to be a bit weird that I won't see what anyone else is doing. I think I'll make it more exciting to watch the video back because I'll be like, oh, I've got what Cheryl's doing. Normally when you're on set, you help each other out, you pep each other up. You know, I'll normally go down, watch whoever's performing on the monitor and whoop and cheer and clap. And we didn't have that today, which was a little bit lonely. Now you're going to get all them rooms 
they turned up separately, shot separately, they can't bear to be in the same room as each other, left separately. Oh well. Okay, change the flowers. Right, now we're going to frozen flowers. We actually dipped the roses in liquid nitrogen, which made them freeze, and then I was able to smash them. Yeah, Pick them up. I like the flowers anyway. Flowers are oh, really angry. I hate them. I hate them. Get the bars. Oh. I'm done now. Final shot of the day was me punching through a glass, which is actually sugar glass. But it was really quite strong. Um, I've injured myself. I've got a cut here that drew blood. That's here for Cheryl, everybody. Don't ever punch out a glass at home. If there's anything to learn from this video, it's a stupid idea. Okay, so I have to go on set now and do my part. Um, apparently, I have to be nice and nasty. Nasty. Action! Nice, nice. I like to get stuck into it. I like to smash. When I was a little kid, I used to be like a little tomboy. You know what, like smashing things up. So I was like, yeah, I smash the bottle of the wall. <laughs> do it again. I was like, ah. It was also nice, you know, because the song, because the, the melodies are quite nice. It was nice to act cute. I enjoy it more when it's free reign and you can kind of just do what you want and how you interpret the song and how you interpret the rhythm and all the rest of it. what to do you're just constantly concentrating whereas when you're doing your own thing you can just go it's better for me I think so there we go I'm all done only 12 hours later but now I can go home and get into bed and just chill out after a very long hard day that's a wrap so that's it for part one stick around for part two and there'll be lots more action This is our 20th music video, so we've done this a lot. 20 videos freaks me out when I think about it. When you think back, like 20 times doing a video. What the hell is that all about? Oh, come on now. Is that the craziest thing you've ever heard? We've worked hard. We have like just bang them out one after the other, one album after the other, or a tour after each other. But that's how we like it. We like to, to keep things moving, keep the ball rolling. Hard working chicks. Cause I've been sitting back, no chance of holding, hoping that nothing ever blows. I think one of my favorite videos I enjoyed making was Sexy No No No. because we were able to wear Uggs under those big bellowing red dresses. Because heels, every woman out there can relate to the fact that heels absolutely kill it. After three hours on set, there's sometimes tears. <laughs> the shoes can't come off because they'll never go back on and it can be a drama. I loved Long Hot Summer. Really, really loved that video. was done in a garage and it just looked like a complete mess like there was little it wasn't a real garage and there was people there fixing up cars and they're you know kind of looking at us like what's going on but the way they done the video it looked beautiful it looked like it was you know done in a studio somewhere where all lovely things and it wasn't at all Love Machine was a really fun video to make as well because that was mostly all of us together all the time and just having a laugh and doing choreography and we had loads of extras. It's just 
a fun vibe and we kind of finished a lot earlier than usual and we were just shocked because we were used to having to finish at like four or five in the morning just battering away to try and get enough shots. Sounds of the Underground will always have that, like, every time we watch that, if it comes on the telly, it's like, you know, you even remember how you felt on that day. You've been in the band two days and you, you still can remember who you were. And it's so far removed from who you are now, so it's like, I was just a, just a baby, really, trying to keep my head above water, failing miserably. <laughs> Okay, so time sponsored by On Your Wrist is half past 12. I've been on for about an hour or something. So I basically came in at about four o'clock and I've done Jack. But it's all getting going now. I've had a couple of Red Bulls, let's have it. I've been nice, I've been naughty. And that's about it. So uh, I'm about to get a little bit more uh, creative. And I, I've decided to go a bit goth today. As you can see, now I wanted to wear something a bit quirky, a little bit edgier. And, and I thought, well, I couldn't find a dress I liked. <laughs> so I went, what about a body stocking <laughs> and a boyfriend suit? Yes, OK, that's enough, enough, enough. Get back. I love dressing up. It's just, I get, don't all girls love dressing up and getting into character, I do. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to smash something. I'm feeling quite... Rah. They've got me all riled up now, like kicking the box now. I really thought I was going to smash it. Right, roll cameras. Sip of drink, put it down quickly. Do the bottle. And up the And cut. What a girl, huh? when your boyfriend pisses you off, don't you? And just like, ah! I love doing scenes like that. It was like coming to the old videos. Um, no good advice. Got to smash the phone box up. I love doing stuff like that. Just a violent bug, really, aren't I? You feel quite silly doing some of it because you're in a little box just doing it and everyone's watching you and you're like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm doing all the neat things. I find the choreography videos probably hard. I'm not one for liking choreography. I've just had to learn a tiny sequence. It doesn't sink in quite as quickly as it does with some of the other girls. What you don't realise is they're going to be doubling it up and, you know, doing it all in post, so it's going to look really graphic, so... Fingers crossed it all comes out OK. from the really, really nice person to the miserable one, like the angry one. Two seconds ago, I was like smashing up a phone. I really got under that. I was feeling angry at that point. The worst bit is the corset that I wore by a million trillion miles. I was like, oh, it's that, this corset. <sighs> I got the heel right on. I kind of looked at it for a second and I was like, yeah, right between the eyes. Yes. Beautiful. Have that. And then when I was smashing it, I thought I'm going to break the heel on these shoes and I want to keep them, so I was like... <laughs> I'm going to keep the shoes. It is now 1.30 a.m. We're still here doing the video and we're just about to move on to the last shot. At last! This corset is killing me. Nadine had to kick through the sugar glass. She's got nothing on her legs. So she's put her, her legs through the glass and it's, it's cut her legs. And um, she's a little bit cut, so now quite a little commotion going on over there. Um, Nadine's bleeding. She'll be fine, she's just very dramatic. Then again, so are we all. So everybody, that is a wrap. Thank you for coming along. I hope you all like it. This is our new video, The Low and Kind. 
actually really enjoy like video shoots. It's like you know, if you're performing, aren't you? It's like being on stage. People don't really seem to understand that those three minutes that you see finished actually can take two days sometimes to shoot. By the time you leave, literally you have so much makeup on that it's disgusting because I have to just keep reapplying it. It's nice when you get to see something like making the video and you can see little things that you think, oh God, I never realized that and I like that. Xenomania and Pet Shop Boys wrote the track The Loving Kind during sessions for the band's 2009 album Yes. Having noticed Chris Lowe's slight reticence towards the song, Brian Higgins suggested that Girls Aloud record the track instead. second single, The Loving Kind, would follow on the 12th of January 2009. The Loving Kind managed to peak at number 10 in the UK, becoming Girls Aloud's 20th consecutive top 10 single. The song peaked on the Irish singles chart and number 16. by the public so thank you so much to all our fans and everyone that voted for us this means so much to us it's our first break in six years so it really does mean a lot the promise was awarded uh, best british single at the 2009 brit awards the group also performed the song during the ceremony the amazing team that we've got working around us and xenomania for writing an amazing song thank you so much hello can I just Thanks. say, it's about time! I think I just wet myself, here you go. Just thank yous to everybody, we really, really appreciate it. Thank yous. Thank you. Thank you to everybody that voted. This is the cherry on the cake, thank you. Have a nice night. Just want a Everybody back here was just getting really emotional when you won. We just want a break. We just want a break after seven years. Do you know what it is? It was something that we, it was just like, we absolutely, it was like, please let us win a Brit. You know, just, just let us win one Brit. And we've just got it. We've just won the Brit. We're really emotional. Congratulations. Oh my God. Girls. It's our seventh year as well. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, we, thank you to everybody. I'm just rabbiting on because I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Untouchable would be released as the third and final single from the album in radio edit form on the 27th of April 2009. Despite being a fan favourite, the single would miss the UK top 10, peaking at number 11 and at number 19 in Ireland.
February 2009, Girls Aloud signed a new record deal with Fascination that would see the group release a further three studio albums. The Out of Control tour commenced in April 2009 at the Manchester Evening News Arena, with the final show on the 6th of June 2009 in Newcastle's Metro Radio Arena. In July 2009, Girls Aloud announced that they were taking a year-long hiatus to pursue solo projects, but would reunite for a new studio album in 2010. However, this would never materialise. After various solo endeavours and three years of hiatus, Girls Aloud reunited for the group's 10th anniversary. I think we're ladies allowed now. The last time we were all together doing a video shoot was in those globes oh. in the untouchable oh, yeah. video. Remember that? Yeah. With air holes, <coughs> there's always oh, lots of exciting plans. They're so exciting and they're so <laughs> under wraps, we don't even know ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have to wait and see. Wait and see. Yeah, yeah there's lots of exciting yeah. things. You sound really short. <laughs> We're really excited for everyone to hear the new song. I feel like obviously all the fans have been waiting for a while. <laughs> it's been three years since I've been with the girls on a video shoot. Kind of really, really exciting, but nerve wracking as well. I was 20 when I got in the group, and now I'm 30, still trying to kind of keep up. It wouldn't be Girls Aloud if it wasn't mayhem. You know what's crazy is that our nieces and nephews and little brothers yeah. and stuff yeah. were like three, four years old when we Kids. started in their teenagers. Now. Teenagers. Oh, like, like, it's it's terrible. <laughs> Amazing actually to be all back together. We've been talking about this day for so long now that it's finally here. It feels really exciting and like it's the right time to just go. It actually doesn't feel like it's been three years. Like that's such a long time, really. It it's gone like quick. Been no, no, seriously. It's like back. a nice holiday, <laughs> yeah. a nice bit of a tan, then back again. <laughs> We were saying to Kimberly earlier, like considering how long it's been since we've all been together shooting together on set, it's like not weird at all, it's really bizarre. We see each other all the time, like yeah, at home, sure. so... It's not like we've literally not <laughs> yeah. seen each other at all for the whole time, but it is different being back In a way, together, yeah. Like Really low and hope to think our service evolved <laughs> from 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty disastrous in the beginning. I've still got that jumpsuit, you know, I found it the other day. <laughs> yes. I was really excited to get back in front of the camera. It's been so long. And just to actually get to have it. <laughs> 
because it's such a high energy track as well, it really gets you sort of jumping when you listen to it. So fingers crossed it does well. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, really, <laughs> I am in serious denial about this 10 year anniversary. Although people keep saying, I'm like, no, it can't be. Couldn't possibly be yeah. 10 years. Very, very exciting day. It's been a while since we've shot a video together. I love the song, so it's great to dance and sing it. <laughs> It feels like we never stopped. I was in LA for a while and, and it literally feels like six months has passed. And now we're back in it again. Go! On the 16th of November 2012, the group released their new single, Something New, which was the official charity single for children in need. The single peaked at number two on the UK singles chart. The group released their second greatest hits compilation, 10, on the 23rd of November 2012. The album would peak at number nine in the UK and number 17 in Ireland. The second single taken from 10, Beautiful Cause You Love Me, was released on the 17th of December 2012. However, the single had a lack of promotion and would fail to chart in the top 40, peaking at number 97. Nadine was reportedly unhappy with the song as she did not agree with its message, feeling that all women were beautiful regardless of whether anyone loved them or not. This was also the only Girls Aloud single where Nadine would not sing co-lead vocals. A documentary special entitled Girls Aloud, 10 Years at the Top, aired on ITV1 on the 15th of December 2012. February 2013, the group embarked on 10 The Hits Tour. On the 20th of March 2013, the group performed their final concert at the Echo Arena in Liverpool. A few hours later, via Twitter, they announced their split. At the time, Nadine had stated that she was not involved in the decision for the band to break up. On the 26th of August 2020, Sarah stated that she'd been diagnosed with breast cancer that had advanced to other parts of her body and in March 2021 said that the disease was terminal. She sadly passed away on the 5th of September 2021, aged just 39. The Girls Aloud singer Sarah Harding has died at the age of 39. She was diagnosed with breast cancer last year. She was part of one of the most successful British female bands of all time. Formed on a reality show, they went on to have 21 top 10 hits. Sarah Harding's mother, Marie, described her as a bright shining star. And her bandmate, Nadine Coyle, has said she is absolutely devastated. Our entertainment correspondent, Lizo Mazimba, looks back at her life. His report contains some flashing images. After three months of competition, the moment her dream came true. Sarah. But Sarah Harding could scarcely have imagined the success that would follow. Every one of their first 16 singles, a top 10 hit. Thanks to a collection of irresistibly catchy songs, they were soon selling thousands of singles and performing to sold out audiences. Sarah brought powerful vocals and a willingness to be portrayed as the band's most outrageous personality. 
the headline-grabbing Party Girl. She also acted. There were small parts in Coronation Street. Actually, I don't suppose by any chance, you know, a Tracy Barlow? And the second of the new St Trinian's movies. It's been fun. It's been great fun. We have a real giggle, actually, in between takes. We're like, we really are naughty schoolgirls. Because we have to be kept told to, sh girls, shut up! Girls Aloud, Nadine Coyle has led the tributes, saying she was absolutely devastated. I can't think of words that could express how I feel about this girl and what she means to me. I know so many of you will be feeling this way. And pop stars judge Pete Waterman paid his tribute to her this afternoon. She was a girl next door that had got it all. She was identifiable by the audience that were going to buy her records. That's That was the beauty of Sarah. When the singer discovered an enlarged lymph node just before COVID began, the pandemic was a factor in her delaying seeking treatment. Breast cancer is, in fact, a very curable illness if it's diagnosed early. Um, but the unfortunate thing in Sarah's case is that she was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, where it had already spread to her body and and, and it'll only you can only survive it for as long as the treatments. Um, are helping and stalling breast cancer from spreading any further. Sarah and the other four members of Girls Aloud went their separate ways in 2013, but not before they'd entertained fans for the best part of a decade. Sarah Harding was a crucial part of the group, a woman who achieved so much in a life cut short at such a young age. Sarah Harding, who's died at the age of 39. To be honest, I've, I've never experienced or anticipated this grief ever. You know, I lost grandparents when I was younger and, and I lost a friend when I was younger, but nothing like this. The feeling of shock and disbelief. I mean, it still lingers now, to be honest. I still can't quite believe it's real. On the 24th of July 2022, Girls Aloud reunited for a 5k run in Hyde Park to raise awareness and money for breast cancer research. Cheryl, Nicola and Nadine participated in the event, with Kimberly taking part remotely. It almost feels like it's like an extension of yourself, because you kind of are the group, like the group was so prolific in all of our lives that when a member is then not there anymore, it's like a little bit of you is not quite there as well. Um, it's just horrible. To be honest, the, it, when you find out that your friend's that sick and the, the prognosis is dire, you feel so helpless. You've never felt have you? You've never felt hopelessness like it. It's, it's horrendous. So the fact that she had one request that we can fulfil is like great for us because it just feels like we're doing something. Yeah. And we felt like we there was nothing we could do for so long. So, but obviously, like coming together now quite often to get things happening is strange because her energy was so electric that we're kind oh, of like the yeah. four like we're the four of us have such a chill vibe and like Sarah's energy was like a firework so you feel that like huge difference in, in energy when she's not there. I think that for us right now like we don't we don't feel like girls allowed we don't feel like a band without Sarah she like I said just now she was such a huge part of our energy that it, it doesn't feel like that and it hasn't even been a year yet. yeah like she's not doesn't feel like she's been doesn't feel like she's gone at all but it doesn't this feel like this time it last year we were actually hanging out we all met yeah. her last year yeah. she was there and we were talking and she didn't even seem that sick I was in denial the entire time and yeah. was the was the you friend were. that was you like, were. Oh, it's gonna be all right. You and totally you know, were. I was completely in denial right up until the kind of the day she passed. So when you think about it this time of last year about how hopeful it seemed even though there was really no hope. Um, yeah, it's really really a lot to kind I of I think as over. well, like we were like we were concerned of your denial. Mm. Like I think for me, like I felt like I'm worried for you that you're not so present in the reality of Everyone it. deals with grief totally. in a situation like that totally differently. Um, I was fully embracing it and talking to her about the afterlife because I'm a big, a huge believer. Nadine was like, oh no, no, we'll be on tour next year. We've got a 20th reunion to get yeah. on with, so you need to get yourself together. Yeah. Get your hair style. Style. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to go Find short? Are you going to go long? 
What are we doing? It's, you know, everyone just handled yeah. it in their own way. On the 28th of April 2023, the band released an alternative vocal mix of Sound of the Underground, with pressed vinyls being sold and money donated to charity. They also announced that their debut album would be reissued both digitally and for the first time on vinyl in celebration of its 20-year anniversary. So have there been times when you've released a single and it has been make or break and you've known about it and other people haven't? Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. For example, yeah. like the show, when we released the show yeah. of our second album, well, that was make or break. It, it was, was really either cool, right? yeah. life or, and it was, and then we had the show Love Machine Jump. Jump. And that was when we started really kind of coming onto our own. Although we had Sound of the Underground, mm. um, No Good Advice, great songs, but it was really not until our second album that people yeah, kind of definitely. got us. Yeah. We were like, all right. We were still getting easy. ourselves, you know, we were finding our feet, finding our sound. Yeah. When I think back to the first album, it was almost like we were on a tightrope, wasn't it? It was like yeah. trying to stay on the line. Yeah. And even a little bit in the first, in the second album, sorry, because we, we only did a mm. theatre tour with the second album. Yeah. Because we didn't really, you know, we just wanted to test the water. We didn't really know how people would respond. Thankfully, it was amazing. Yeah. And we were able to then do yeah. the arena tour with the next album. But initially, even then, still, when we were about yeah. to tour, what were the neighbours say? We were like, we were really oh, people sad. are going to buy the tickets. Do you remember how nervous we were when we were doing the, the show? Like, literally, like, yeah. shaking. Yeah. And we were trying to do a song with CD UK or oh, something. Oh, like, <laughs> worst thing we can do ever is do a, a like, brand new song live no, on yeah. TV. We, we just uh, balls it right up. <laughs> and we're sorry. We <laughs> have to add insult yeah. to injury, yeah. <laughs> Girls Aloud are notably one of the very few British reality television acts to achieve continued success and longevity. Their legacy speaks for itself, and their music continues to enthrall fans both old and new. I really hope you've enjoyed this series, and thank you so much for watching. For you,